is up everybody logan here again with another video coming right at you today and let's talk about the s p 500 um definitely looks a little weak here but here are a couple of reasons why i don't think the stock market's crashing or gonna go much further than this now i can totally be wrong and i'm okay with that there's just a couple of things that are standing out to me right now that i want to highlight and i want to use my standard deviated charts to do it as well so you know we have the short-term time frames which i'll start with i usually start with the daily chart but um, very rarely do we ever break out of my hourly over here and you guys can see we're breaking out underneath the 30 minute and the 10 minute anytime this is ever to happen i mean anytime we even get close to the nosebleed side we turn around or towards the bottom right boom turn around revert to the mean and we struggled to break out today at 46.54. We just couldn't do it. And then a lot of this was emotional selling. So one of the main things that we're seeing here too, if we go to the daily chart, maximize my sell, the RSI is poking red. Now we are down to about 37 off of this heavy sell. And then right here, you guys can see that we have the 89 day moving average. And this has been very solid support in the past. Anytime we saw any sort of selling to where we did get a bounce, even when the TTM squeeze was heading down, right? You guys can see right here, two red candles. And then this day was a red candle, but we actually got a little green bounce. Uh, and the VIX nearly wasn't even as high as it is now. Um, I think on this day, the VIX was 27, 26, 25 ish. And we we're seeing a 32 at close today. So that's a little significant difference there to where you're going to see more major moves in the price action. Uh, from here on out until the VIX retraces to underneath 20. So looking at it from that standpoint, um, we did see we got the S&P to fire off a squeeze back here, shot us back over the moving averages and we had that crazy run. And then we started to look a little toppy back here. And I remember mentioning it for a long time, like when the TTM squeeze is downtrending, what the S&P likes to do, if you guys look back here, is anytime it comes back down and comes under the moving averages before it breaks back up is it likes to come down to about the green line. Now this was September, it fell below it. And then you guys can even see back here, right? Like a couple days and then pop back over it underneath and then trudging along. So anytime we do come down here, we don't spend a lot of time on the downside. And uh, this looks a lot like March and February where we had more hectic price movement in the day, you know, where the S&P would drop 150 points. But what's really interesting about today in particular is the fact that we did actually start the day up 2%. And then we dropped all the way down, uh, down to 45.13 before we closed. Now, this was off the Omicron news, right, with the uh, new COVID strain case in California. So that's going to cause the market to have some volatility. But I still think there's more fear in this market as of now. Um, and I, I think a lot of this was a lot of panic selling just because I'm going to stick to my mean reversion charts here. I mean, we have 46.20, even on the longer time frames, 47.40. And then even over here, right, the means 45.94, right around 4,600. So I'm more leaning towards that for the rest of the week. I do think we get a pop. There's this really interesting um, price acceptance around, you know, this 45.65 to 45.95 range. We even saw it chop there for quite a bit today. And it was the longest time we'd stayed in a range all day, right? It was about, I think, two hours we did this or an hour and a half. Uh, we stayed in this range where, where price had been finding acceptance before moving back over the moving average on the shorter term time frames. Um, and, but it is making, right, lower lows and lower highs. But I do think with such a drastic sell-off today that we will see some sort of reversal. And then if we pick up right here, uh, futures are about to reopen again. But if we take a look here too, I want to look at the VIX. Now, very rarely does the VIX ever get super hectic in my longer term time frames. The only other stock that's done that, and I'll come right back to the VIX, is Apple. Apple did do that down on my 195 charts. But then we ended up selling off today, as you can see. I mean, Apple has just been very extended. You know, it doesn't really look that bad on the shorter term time frames, though. Personally, uh, yeah, it was, it was only down 0.3% on today's selling and hit a new all-time high at 170. Just ballistic, right? So let's go back to the VIX. Just want to show you guys Apple. It's had a lot of relative strength lately, but... Uh, just in general on the VIX, if we look here, shorter term time frame in the nosebleeds, in the nosebleeds, and then over here, 
Uh, we are also in the nosebleeds and actually <laughs> exceeding it on the hourly chart. Here's the mean all the way back at 2230. So I expect us to drift down there. And we did come down there today before getting this breakout just off of fear. And you guys can see how like ridiculously extended we are on my 195. So I remember I was trying to uh, short the market around this time. And then we got that nice VIX pop on Friday. And then we were able to get out of our SPX um, DTEs, of four, sorry, <laughs> our SPX trade that we had in the Discord um, for a while. And then now we're continuing to see volatility, which I did not expect. I really didn't expect to see it get this crazy. Uh, you know, 28, 27, yeah, but uh, I did not expect us to break above 28.50. I really didn't. I thought we were on our way back down. And if we look at the daily chart here, you guys could see that the VIX was squeezing and we had that in October, right? This is where the market turned around, squeezed and it was negative and we saw the VIX drop quite a bit. I mean, from 23 all the way down to 14, that's quite a decline. And we're seeing that over here, which was the VIX was squeezing. I tried to mention that last week and we're seeing it pop off way more than I anticipated. Like I said, the last time we were one and a half standard deviations away from the mean on the VIX was actually February. And that all came in one day. I mean, this was one day that it went from 23. And then look what the next two days did. Uh, it just had this range, but it was more of a negative day uh, closing down. And now granted, the VIX was trading higher back here than it is now. This is a little different, but still the same concept. And last time we were one standard deviation away from the mean to the upside. We've had it multiple times back in September. And generally, we find a way to retrace back to it. Uh, mean reversion works really well with the VIX. We also have to be uh, cautious on treating this as a stock. Just kind of read the price action and take it for what it is. But I don't anticipate the VIX to continue to break out from here. I'd be very surprised. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. So let's use QQQ. I'm pretty much getting the same thing here. Now, the interesting thing is QQQ actually has a lot more downside to the 50 day and the 89 is the one on my chart. Um, we saw that lead a lot of the selling today, but we still have a lot of relative strength like Microsoft. Microsoft looks bullish here. It really does. If you guys take a look at the chart, uh, it didn't make new lows. It's trading in that same range. And I just love this chart specifically. This right here is the 30 minute it called the top at 408 and then right here it's trying to call the bottom now of course this changes as time moves on to where the actual top and bottom is but i truly think that we are in the accumulation range again and we'll start to head back up you know 395 396 by the end of the week uh, doubt that we'll get over 400 again like we were this morning you know and that would take probably the s p to like 4660 i think that's kind of crazy but we do if you guys look at the expected move for the SPX right now, it's 103 points by Friday. So this that means that the market makers are expecting that the market moves 103 more points from now until Friday. And that's due to the volatility rise. Could that be to the downside? Totally. But could it be back to the upside? Yeah. And we've seen the expected move actually exceed, or we've seen the market exceed the expected move almost every single week for the past eight weeks, nine weeks. And it's been making my trading a little tougher um, for that reason. And then another thing I want to look at is RSP. If you guys don't know what RSP is, this is the S&P 500, but if everything was equally weighted. And if you guys can look down here on my 195, I mean, we are right down at like that bottom range, right? So this is just the even distribution. We can take a look at the Dow. And it doesn't look as great on the daily chart. It looks like it wants to roll over. Not the best looking sign, right? I mean, it looks sort of like March, but the only thing about March and when we had the last stock market crash, and I'm not warning of a crash, I'm, I'm not here to do that. That's just not my style. Um, the only difference was we were actually up towards the nosebleeds. And whenever you're one standard deviation away from the mean on the actual daily chart, that's where you start to chop. And like, even if you bought RSP back in May at the top, you're still break even. So. It's a really, really, you just got to really be cautious here. The RSI though is, you know, 30, generally a good time for it to pick itself back up over the next few days and a few weeks. So this is just RSP, the equally weighted ETF. And I like to use this just to gauge the S&P. Definitely did look weaker, but that is because we have IWM. 
you know, down another 2.2%. This thing's down to 23 on the RSI, uh, just very, very negative here and uh, negative momentum. So curious to see what we do here, but I do think that if we are going to see a bottom on IWM, it would be around 203, 204. And then if it was to break any further underneath this, I'd be very surprised. And I mean, it called it here, right? My chart said we wouldn't exceed one standard deviation from the mean to the upside. And we have yet to do that. Yeah, we did break new highs, but that was the mean. So I'm very curious to see where we move from here, but we have seen a lot of weakness in stocks like Square, where it just, these stocks just don't seem like they're done selling. And it's really tough too. And I know a lot of people are very speculative with them, but to see like 30% declines on these stocks, it's just very interesting, you know, and, and then funds like ARK, right? ARK K, um, you know, they're down to new lows for the first time in forever. I mean, I think ARK's down, yeah, look at that, 6.7% today because of how speculative it is with a lot of its holdings. 